Next on BYUSN, four games into the season, who is BYU's top running back and who's their top receiver? Does it even matter? Plus, we got our first look at the new men's basketball team last night in the season preview. What stood out? Which player revealed he's out three to four months? Uh-oh. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Tuesday, September 27th, wherever and however you're connected. Always great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, alongside a man who is not injured, Jerem Jordan. Well, for now, you're injured. You hurt your knee over the weekend. You all right, man? A little uh, grade one, borderline grade two MCL sprain. Sounds official. It hurts a lot. Did you give a report <laughs> on yourself? I just, I did. On social media uh, slash here? Uh, I have not done it on social media. This is my, this is, I've gone public with it for the first time here. I do like it when people give us the update on injuries. We had that from Gunnar Romney's mom, Jenny. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, and, and you know, it, it happens. You need to be our Adam Schefter. You, you no, I want a family life. No, <laughs> no. I don't want to have two phones and constantly be, no, thank you. Uh, On today's show, David Nixon, uh, perhaps he's our Schefter. On QB superstition versus Utah State and how to prepare for a struggling team like Utah State. Craziness in the Big 12 plus four power rankings like where's Kansas and why and new bowl projections for BYU. But first... Today's headline. Uh, yeah, let's start with BYU football on a short week, preparing for a rare Thursday night game against the Utah State Aggies at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, 8 p.m. Eastern, ESPN National. Big spotlight for both teams. 19th ranked BYU, of course, 3 and 1. Utah State struggling mightily, 1 and 3, in another battle for the old wagon wheel. Who's going to start at running back for BYU, by the way? I think the hot hand thing does have some merit. I mean, we're going to play all three of those guys. They're, they're, you'll see them all. It's not like, it's not like uh, you know anybody's fired or anything like that. We're going to use them all. But it, it was a situation where Miles got hot, and it just felt like the right thing to just keep giving him the ball. And um, there were no long faces on the sideline from anybody. You know, he everyone I think was happy for him. And maybe next game it's somebody else that gets it rolling. And and uh, you know that's just how it is. As mentioned, receiver Gunnar Romney expected to play versus Utah State, according to Aaron Roderick. Gunnar's mom, Jenny, tweeted that he lacerated his kidney on day three of fall camp. Oy. Quote, he will finally get to see the field this week. End quote. That's great news. That, this is an injury that typically happens like car accidents. So That's, that's a tough injury. That's man, not the great news I'm referring man, to. Oh, man. That he is playing this Saturday, or at least is expected to play, is great news. Let's go, Get him ready Gunner. before Notre Dame. Come on. Jaron Hall would love to have him back. Jaron Hall is also on the Manning Award watch list. 17th year of the award includes the top 30 quarterbacks in the nation going into the season. Hall was specifically honored as one of the Manning Award stars of the week for his performance against Wyoming. 26 of 32, 337 yards, four touchdowns, no turnovers, and a 14-point win. Men's Hoops held day one of practice yesterday at 6 a.m. and as seen on BYU TV last night at 7 p.m. as well. Trevin Nell told us he's out for a while. I ended up hurting my shoulder last season, the very first game, and I experienced a lot of shoulder pain. Um, me and Rob, Rob did a great job. He just kind of, we kind of just maintained the shoulder injury, I guess, and then we played throughout the year, got a couple quarter zone shots, but it came down that I had to get surgery on my rotator cuff. I partially tore the tendon, um, and so the timetable on that is just, you know, Coach Pope says a couple weeks, but it's more like three to four months. That is a bummer for the junior Trevenel who has two years to play after this, assuming this is a redshirt year. We'll see. Cougars play blue, the blue and white scrimmage October 26th, live on BYU TV. You never want to lose one of the best shooters on the team. Women's basketball and new head coach Amber Whiting in her first season also underway today, their first practice. They're getting ready for their first game. Mark it down November 8th against Colorado State. Women's volleyball goes up a spot in the latest ABCA poll. It's number 15. After beating LMU and number 17 Pepperdine, the Cougars play at Portland and Gonzaga this Thursday and Saturday. And a shout out to BYU men's soccer, ranked number one in Region 6 according to the NIRSA. They play Weber State Friday and Ogden. When it comes to club teams, BYU is pretty much at the top, competing for another national title, we think this fall all rise and shout it's time for what's trending presented by bodyguards protection for a life worth living learn more at bodyguards.com it has become a laundry list of injuries for byu football jerem including certainly on the offensive side at the wide receiver position running back not so much injuries but 
just trying to find the guy who has the quote-unquote hot hand. So at this juncture, heading into game number five against Utah State, who is running back one for BYU? Who is wide receiver one for BYU? And does it even matter? I'm not sure it matters, Spence, uh, because <laughs> as long as someone produces, it's great. Now, you do need to have defined roles on the team. Like, you know that Jaron Hall is the quarterback, and he's the starter, and that helps him perform better because he knows he's the guy. In terms of receivers, it doesn't matter who, who wide receiver one is, per se. I'll get to that in a second. RB1 is clearly Miles Davis at the moment based on the hot hand from Wyoming. But that can quickly change. Hey, there's Miles. <laughs> Just practicing constantly. Miles Davis uh, obviously comes in with a hot hand. By the way, if you take away the 70-yard run, he was still averaging 4.8 yards per carry on the season. He had three carries prior to Saturday. Still a really nice number. Christopher Brooks had the hot hand against South Florida. Nobody had the hot hand against Baylor and Oregon. So BYU is still figuring out who is it that we're going to use here. Uh, and those three guys are the three, obviously. I don't think it matters. Lopini Katoa could certainly do great things. Miles Davis gave you a different look. Christopher Brooks gives you a certain look. Perhaps it's situational, but Miles Davis has done everything to deserve at least the beginning of those reps on Thursday. He said after the game he was not told, hey, we're going to go to you more. They just went to him, and suddenly it worked. Now, it didn't work on drive two when they had rush, pass, pass, and were three and out. Now, but they still stuck with him later. It wasn't a quick pull, which is great. So, it do, one, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But, two, you have to understand, like, maybe this week Miles goes, oh, I'm, I'm perhaps getting more carries this week, more in practice, more with the number one offense, so on and so forth. With the receivers, Chase Roberts sounds like he's going to be able to go. It's uh, according to Aaron Roderick. Gunnar Romney's going to play. You got Keanu Hill. I wouldn't imagine Puka plays in this game Thursday. Short week, uh, you know, sounds like perhaps a hamstring there. Hopefully he gets better. And for Notre Dame, like in two weeks after that, that feels uh, like a stretch, right? Fingers crossed. Ah. Wide receiver one doesn't matter to me. I really appreciate the preparation of Keanu Hill to be ready for that moment because someone had to show up, and he did in a big way because he didn't have Gunner. Puka goes out of the game, mm. and uh, no chase. Keanu had to do that. He had to do that, and so did Braden Cosper. Stepped up. So it doesn't matter to me. RB1 probably should be Miles Davis going into uh, this game. And then receiver one, who cares? Jaron Hall's going to spread the ball around. Somebody sent me a message on Twitter and said, BYU low-key has one of the best wide receiver groups in the country. I don't think it's low-key anymore. I just think that they have one of the best wide receiver groups in the country. They're top 20, if not top 10. Like, if you have your two best wide receivers out and are still continuing to do this, and part of this is Jaron Hall being unbelievable 100%. too, right? 100%. But BYU, to their credit, and we thought this might be the case, has a very, very good wide receiver room. Look at, look at that right there. You we haven't even mentioned deep. Cody Epps. You go six deep, and it's like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. Well, they'll be okay. What? You, you're out Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney and Chase Roberts, and ah, uh, sorry, right, we'll be all right. Really? Well, they have proven that yes. they will be okay. And props to BYU, because this is what we've always hoped, is that the twos could show up in that way. And because, because Jaron Hall's playing great, and it's Wyoming, you can do that. That's awesome. When it's Notre Dame, what, can, can BYU do the same thing? The good news is they won't have to because Gunnar Romney and Chase Roberts are going to be back in the mix. I talked to Chase yesterday. Uh, says he's feeling better. We'll see if he plays against Utah State. I imagine that he will along with Gunnar Romney. Uh, but, again, we're going to be told game time decision. We'll find out yeah. literally when the game GTD. starts. As far as the running back situation goes, grateful that it's not an injury thing that, that's factoring in yes. here. Okay, that, that's, different. that's beneficial. But you can answer this question in a couple of ways. Like, who's RB1 right now? Or, you know, who's RB1 that we are projecting will be RB1, you know, by the late games in the season? Like, I feel like it's just going to change oh, a lot. Oh, I have no like, idea. Who, yeah, Later? like, I don't know. I don't know. But does it even matter? And I don't think it matters that much because Jaron Hall has carried – you know, the majority of the offensive load on his shoulders. Nine touchdowns, one interception, making the big plays at the right time. I'd like to see him open it up a little bit more with his feet, per se. That might help the running backs get going a little bit. But like coaches... The, in the RPO. Yeah, but, but again, like, that's risk, right? Risk-reward. I don't want that with Jaron as much, although situationally, yes. 
Russell he, Wilson style. He ran a lot. Yeah, old Russell Wilson, not current Russell Wilson. Uh, Let's ride. Jaron is a more than capable runner, but his value is uh, his best availability. His best ability is availability. Yes. Right now. If he's healthy, he, he needs yes. to be healthy for BYU to achieve its goals. If if he's not, that changes things. He's quite a such bit. a great athlete in so many ways, and so. I have visions of him, you know, an occasional called RPO where he breaks out for a long touchdown run like he did against Baylor, right? Yes, and Aaron Roderick is certainly capable of doing that. Aaron Roderick seems like to be the master of setting things up, moving all the chess pieces, and then he hits the big one, right, with a trick play or that RPO that I'm referencing yes, at Baylor last year. a fourth year. and one where the box is loaded and no safety sitting there behind. That's the spot. Sure. Yeah. J Jaron Hall is more than capable of it. But I'm, I'm with you. His availability is his greatest asset right now, and he is showing just how much he is worth because he has been healthy and, knock on wood, has not dealt with significant health concerns to this point in the season. So We're so we're so stitious that we're going to knock on wood. We're doing that. There's no wood here, is there? Oh, I'll no, fall. this is wood. Yep, That's there you go. Okay. There you go. I, I, uh, RB1, yeah. wide receiver, I just don't think it matters because Jaron Hall has been so good. Who's throwing to the wide receivers? And, Taking nothing away from Chase Roberts and Keanu Will and Cody Epps and Braden Cosworth. Those guys have made some outstanding catches, but Jaron Hall is the man behind this. He's making it all happen. It doesn't matter. Yes, like, and the O-line is giving him great time to throw. Absolutely. And the O-line is, is uh, creating holes that Miles Davis is running through. And D Miles does a good job of making tacklers miss. Like That's th something Chris Brooks probably needs to get to a little more is, can you make that first guy miss? Can you jump into that hole and get a couple extra yards. Yeah, Chris Brooks has great acceleration. Yes. Once he, like, he's got great top-end speed, right? But it, it appears that a little bit of a runway is needed to get him going. And you're referencing, like, you want to see him make the first guy miss and then instead of the offensive line constantly having to and, create the runway. And maybe he's the guy that, uh, you know, inside the 20 is getting you the tough yards that maybe are tough for Miles Davis to get, where Miles can dance in more open space. Uh, Lopini feels like he can kind of do both. I love that BYU has these three. It doesn't matter to me who the guy is. I just want to see yards gained. But for BYU, you hope that the psyche of Christopher Brooks and Lopini Kato are okay given this situation. It's hard to sit there and uh, for those guys and be like, Chris is like, I was brought in here to be kind of the main guy. Lopini's like, what do I have to do to be the main guy? He's always been a good, like, ready to be that second sure, option, sure. 1B, right? And then Miles is, is the shiny new toy for BYU. So we'll, we'll see what happens in this game. This is a perfect game to figure some things out because when you walk into Notre Dame, you need to know who you are. You need to know who is doing what. And I hope that BYU does after five games. How many carries does it take for an offensive coordinator or you know, Harvey Unga to determine, okay, this guy still has the hot hand. Like, how many drives and carries do you give Miles What's Davis? What's the leash like? To, like four or five carries, and it's like, eh, I don't have it tonight. Or is that too, is that like way too preemptive? Like and too, how too much soon? of that's on the O-line, blah, blah, blah. Clint talked a strong tough. comment after the game where he said you can't blame the uh, offensive the like you can, only blame, you can only blame them for so long. Yep. Okay, before okay. you have to have a guy make a play, and Miles Davis was the guy to make the plays, but... I mean, how many carries does it take to determine, like, oh, yep, he's still got the hot he's hand got, tonight. What if Christopher Brooks gets a hot hand and goes, we don't, we don't forget about Christopher Brooks no. and Lopini Katoa. We remember all three. I thought Lopini Katoa, frankly, against USF, outside of the two big long runs that Chris Brooks both had, you know, one was a speed option, you know, that Jaron Hall you know, did a good job. They, they kind of... Uh, they, when he, sucked in the yeah, end. yeah, they sucked in. Like he, yeah. that's Jaron making the play, allowing Chris to get break off with a ton of space, and the right. offensive line opened up a huge hole. It's all collaborative on that other run. It's all collaborative. Okay. But yeah. the USF game, I felt like honestly, Lopini had like the best game running the ball, making guys miss and stuff like that. So they've all yeah. had kind of their moments. You right? need all of them. Uh, it's not like well, you don't need three. No, you need all three. If you're going to beat Notre Dame and Arkansas, yeah. or one of those two, let's go. You need those. Okay, uh, today's a loaded show, so Topic 2 features our totally unbiased <laughs> Big 12 Plus 4 Power Rankings. Lots of controversy on this list, Spence. In fact, it's so hard to know who's second through six. There is an unprecedented <laughs> five-way tie. <laughs> Oklahoma State is the top team in the league right yes. now. Uh -huh. Then there's a tie for second with BYU, Baylor, Kansas State, Oklahoma, <laughs> and Kansas. <laughs> Kansas, okay? TCU is seventh, Texas Tech, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Texas, who lost to Texas Tech, OT, by the way. West Virginia, UCF, Houston. It's wild that Houston is 14 here. What do you make of these? A five-way tie for second. <laughs> Makes complete sense, honestly. I mean, if you break it down by resumes, 
it makes perfect sense why there is a five-way tie. Yep. Because BYU has the head-to-head -head win against Baylor. Baylor uh, went on the road and beat Iowa State. Solid win. It was a close loss to BYU, right? Yeah. Okay. Double OT on the road. Kansas State has the best win of anybody on their resume. At Oklahoma. Road win at Oklahoma. Shout out to my friend Cody who went to the game. But Oklahoma has been number one in the poll until they lost a close game at home to Kansas State. Yeah. And then Kansas is undefeated. They're 4-0. Oh. Kansas is 4-0. Oh. They haven't played like a yeah, super they, tough schedule, but yeah. still, no. this is a major step Wait, forward. Hey, shout out to for the Jayhawks, Jayhawks for showing up. Hey, like, they're 4-0. Oh. Until, until they lose, they're going to be tied for second, probably. Uh, TCU, I think, is sneaky here. They're 3-0, and, oh, and I, I think TCU's, TCU might yeah. be, like, really good. There's no team in the league with a losing record through four games. That's pretty good. No, Texas Tech. It's two and Te two. Just beat Texas head to head. What? Look at Texas. Houston's Texas played is two OT games. And okay. split. The the Longhorns are in the number eleven spot. We had them two and two. What did we had them, Ben? The other number, we had were they three two or, or three? Something? The other, were they two like or three, three last week? <laughs> because they played a close game with Alabama. <laughs> Moral victory. Then you lose to Texas Tech. Like, but who has Texas beaten? Not, not really anybody. They're, they're, so if this is a meritocracy, I feel hey, like this poll is pretty accurate. It, yes, and listen, in week four, <laughs> it's hard to know who's who right now. Uh, clearly, this will, a five-way tie yes, with second. the tie. We will separate that as we go. <laughs> it is sticky right now. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Kansas as tie. good as BYU, is that what we're saying? <laughs> with the tie? They have a chance. Are we say Kansas They'll is have as a good chance to prove it in the next few weeks. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's go. Our question of the day. Unfortunately for all of you, it has nothing to do with a five-way tie. Do you believe Kansas is as good as BYU in football? In our completely unbiased Big 12 plus 4 power rankings. So unbiased. Uh, rather, the question is, who is BYU's RB1 right now? Like, who's the number one running back? It has nothing to do with injuries. It's the running back, y'all. The hot hand. Uh, and it, well, do you think it'll stay that way? Is it Chris Brooks, Lopini Katoa, Miles Davis? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. Mon underscore Adam on Instagram chimes in saying quote it felt like wyoming was an audition for miles davis mm -hmm. and he showed up just one game but he earned it give the rock to davis is it just a one game thing no i believe that aaron roderick said look we're going to play all three you will see all three against utah state i don't think miles davis has like earned straight up like he's now the clearly the number well, one running i back. think he starts on thursday sure, getting maybe, the first great. series all right yeah maybe he doesn't he starts? Lopini like, did, right? And then it was Davis on the second drive. The poll has Miles, by the way, we threw out a poll. Miles Davis, 68%. Not, not right a now. shocker because of Dominated. what he did against Wyoming. It's always, well, what have you done for me? They lately? said hot hand. So clearly it's Miles. Yes, it's, that's the hot hand the thing. carrying yes. over. Is it's Miles. not the season. It's what have you done for me? But lately? what if he has yeah. five carries for 16 yards in three drives? Then what? But does he still have the hot hand? Like, then, we'll, still then we'll rub our eyes. And go, like, oh, it's not Notre Dame, it's Utah State. What's going on? Like, what? then what? Yeah. Then you pull a switch. Then you and switch. You At some point, yeah. It's a little bit weird for me. Like, I, I wish that there were a clear number it's one. It's a like, results-based situation. Like, the running back by committee approach is, it's a little weird for me. Like, I, I but hey, got to go with it. Can you imagine them doing this in church callings? <laughs> Sorry, not good enough. You're, you're out. You're done. It's like, let's get someone in here who can oh, teach boy. some doctrine. <laughs> Tonight, get the inside scoop on Cougar football. The head ball coach, Kalani Sataki, on his show. It's Greg Bell talks with Jacob Robinson, former Aggie, turned Cougar. Keanu Hill in the film room. Very fun conversation. And a neat new deep blue on defensive analyst and former Cougar, Jan Jordan. Up next on BYU Sports Nation, former BYU and NFL linebacker David Nixon yeah. in the house. Uh, what does oh, he think hey, of don't all these the furniture. defensive injuries for BYU? <laughs> yes, pet the Cougar. Perhaps it's good luck to get healthy again. That's Spence's thing on game day with that stuff, Cougar. Come on, man. Stay with us on BYU Sports Nation. David, know your role. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguard. Protection for a life worth living. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do. 
in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. My dad was born in Shila, in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. What's up? Shall we do this with uh, a former NFL and BYU linebacker, David Nixon? Heard of him. I think we shall. Hey. Welcome to the show. But welcome, up, to the welcome to your home, yeah, your new man, home. This is the new home. It's also my home. This is where yes, we film is. AFR as well. Yes, it is. So I'm glad we're cohabitating here. We feel like you guys <laughs> enter our space, but that's. <laughs> but this is a, it's a beautiful look. The couches, uh, you guys have dressed yeah. up very nicely. Yeah, uh, we yeah. did this. There was no he no. Uh, we don't do any of this. Yeah, we just yeah. show up. We have an amazing crew. All right, we've got a lot to talk about because. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. There are a ton of injuries on the BYU football team right now. We were uh, talking late into the night after the win over Wyoming about this and how much it's going to affect BYU going into the Utah State game and then into Notre Dame and Arkansas. So let's go ahead and start there. Um, we think that a bunch of guys are going to come back for Utah State, certainly by Notre Dame. So, I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your level of concern for the BYU defense specifically with injuries? Listen, if, if there's anything we learned in the past, and including this year, is that it really is a next man up mentality. I, mean, I remember looking out on the field against, um, uh, who we even played last year, Wyoming, and... <laughs> There were names I'd never even recognized. And we were trying to look, and they weren't even the two deep. These are kids who are the three deep. And, and that's kind of been the mentality is somebody's got to step up because this has been, unfortunately, it's been an ongoing theme for the last few years for BYU is injuries, right? And, and especially with the brutal schedules BYU has uh, played, including this year yeah. uh, with Baylor and Oregon back-to-back. -back. And so, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, fortunately, the backups have come in and played pretty well. And, and, you, and you look at the, the production that, that they had this last week and uh, pretty happy with how it all played out. But, man, I don't know what it is. BYU's got to find a way to keep their guys healthy because it's, it's, it's a joke, honestly. It's Why, crazy. It, yeah, it's tough. And I'm not sure what you can do about it. We've talked about this in years past with strength and conditioning. BYU emphasizes all that to avoid injuries, yet the game is violent. Um, so you just have to be deep. And at receiver, BYU's been super deep. Like Keanu Hill sitting there waiting yep. going, Hey, your boy is going to have a game like this, and, and gosh, he did. And then Miles Davis at RB3. Miles Davis, Cody Epps. I mean, Cody Epps has come on his last few games. I mean, and, and, and of course, we're not even talking about Chase Roberts, who nobody really knew about, you know, and then, and then Cosper with his first touchdown. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of credit goes to his offensive staff, specifically Fessy Satake, for getting his guys ready. I mean, to have that constant evolving door in that room and not knowing who's going to play – and who's going to go out with injury, right? Well, Chase Roberts goes out in the first half, and all of a sudden the backup's got to step up, and you got to have guys that know what routes to run, and what do you shift a guy over from X to Z or vice versa? I mean, there's, there's a lot of moving parts, and, and the fact that there's not really any breakdowns. We saw the one breakdown with Miles Davis and Jaron Hall uh, where they kind of hid in the backfield. Uh, but other than that, you don't see a lot of busted plays from this BYU team. You don't see a lot of guys running wrong routes. I mean, that's really impressive given all the injuries and different experience and young guys who have to step up. And so very impressed with Roderick, Fessy, and the rest of the staff for having all these guys ready because, I mean, it'd be, it'd be easy to see these young guys coming in and running a post when they're supposed to run a corner and, and just being a mess. But instead, Jaron's on target 
uh, on point with those guys, and, and it's almost like you know he didn't skip a beat. And defensively, the hope is that BYU can continue to play well because when you play Notre Dame and Arkansas, it's different than when you play Wyoming and Utah State, certainly on both sides of the ball, all three areas. No Max Tooley was an issue. We saw more talent all free at uh, safety. If we learned anything from the UAB game, was it that, hey, that's not the same BYU team per se. So the hope is this week they can get healthy, get things going, because Notre Dame is sitting there next yeah. week, David, and then Arkansas at home. Those are two massive games. Yeah, I, I think the guys that are on the fence, you want to get them, you want to have them play. Uh, guys that are still, you know, that have issues that could pop back up again. For example, a hamstring. You don't want to push a hamstring a week early, right? So no Puka this week. I don't think you think. play Puka. Yeah. We'll see if we see him against Notre Dame and Arkansas. Yeah, I mean, the ham and the hamstring injuries, those are always so different. I mean, it, it depends on the player, right? Some of them are, are pretty bad tears. Some are just tweaks. And they all classify them as a hamstring pull, right? So you just never know the, the severity of it. Uh, but I think guys that are either that are on the fence, you sit them. Because fortunately for BYU, you've seen the experience. And, and you saw guys step up last week. Um, I think with Utah State, with their struggles this year, I think you can get away with, with playing guys the, the second and third string to show they can play against Wyoming. And I'm not trying to downplay the Utah State team because they're going to come in fired up, no question. They do every year. I mean, this is their Super Bowl, especially given their record right now. Uh, this is a huge game for them to knock off a ranked opponent. Um, but I, I think with what BYU shown on film and, and their backups, I think they can get away with, with playing their second and third stringers that have shown they're very capable. What an interesting situation at uh, the wide receiver and running back positions right now. We've been asking, okay, who's RB1, who's wide receiver one? Let's start with the wide receivers. I mean, crazy as it sounds, like if you told me, all right, BYU's going to roll out Keanu Hill, Cody Epps, and Braden Cosper on Thursday night, I wouldn't bat an eye. But all right, it's all good. That's, that's crazy thinking of no Puka Nakua, no Gunnar Romney, no Chase Roberts. Now, we think Gunnar Romney and Chase Roberts are going to play. Uh, who's wide receiver one? Because I... We all think Puka is, like, the best receiver, but he's not healthy. So who is that guy right now? I don't, I don't think we need a guy. I mean, you, you look at Puka, the fact that he was wide receiver one, no question going into the season, he goes down, and all of a sudden by committee, the wide receiver group by committee has stepped up. And I think – I mean, it's nice to have a wide receiver one that, that's obviously better than the others because defenses have to game plan for him, right? They, they've got to roll coverages. You've got a double team, which opens up anywhere else on the field. But right now you've got so many guys that can, can contribute, and Jaron Hall is playing such phenomenal football that it doesn't matter who wide receiver one is because his distribution and his vision and, and, and the way he's able to get the ball out on time to these receivers and the fact that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, I don't think it really matters. I, I, I think, I mean, you look at the numbers across the board, and it, every game, you go back to even this last game, very evenly distributed the ball is. And I think, once again, that, that, what, that's nice for, for, for Aaron Roderick because you can dial up any play and, and know that all your guys, you can depend on your guys to come up with big plays, right? Um, and that keeps the defense off balance, too, because it's like, man, they just hit us over here with Keanu Hill with the deep bomb. Now they've got a back shoulder throw to Cody Epps on the sideline. And then we're going to hit Isaac Rex on, a, on an out route as well. And so it's like, what gives? I mean, we, even if we do double team, we're getting torched over here. And so I think it's great that BYU, you know, right now has so many weapons. They don't have to dedicate wide receiver one to one guy and say he's our only go-to guy when we need a big play. All those guys are stepping up. And that's, a, that's big time because I don't think BYU can get to 3-1 and one without it. And they are. And they're in the top 20, which is awesome. Okay, so Adam Gibby tweeted this. List of BYU QBs to get injured in the last decade versus Utah oh, State. Oh, don't bring this up right 12, now. 12, 14, 16, obviously, <laughs> Taysom. 17, Bo Hodge and Coy Detmer Jr. 2019, Jaron Hall. 21, Baylor Romney. Do you even play Hall on Thursday, he says. <laughs> of course you play Jaron Hall. But the history against Utah State in this situation is super weird, is it not? It is weird. I don't get it. I mean, is your superstition so high that you actually consider doing something no, like this? No. <laughs> no, but honestly, you might tweak your game plan a little bit to say get the ball out faster. Let's, hit some, let's have some, some quick slants and outs instead of trying to hold on to the ball too long. And, Jaron, you are not running the ball. Uh, I mean, Jaron's on that list, right? Jaron's on that list from 2019. Yeah. Got I a mean, concussion. I mean, I, I, I think. Se like you just, second one of that year. Yeah, you're just yeah. cognizant and aware of, of what's going on. And, and once again, you are aware of, of this being a big game for Utah State. They're going to come out playing hard and fire it off. And yes. so uh, you're aware of that element. And so that comes into play. But ultimately, I think you play your game and maybe you adjust it slightly. But, okay. you know, you've got you to go out there and take care of business. Okay, so maybe no RPO, like zero RPO for Jaron Hall against Utah State. That's my, that's my take every game of the year right now. I, don't want, <laughs> I do not want him running the ball. Now Aaron Ever? is going to run that on the first play. Because like, Aaron's like, oh, last Saturday, 
What do we need to do? We need to establish the run? Okay, let's throw yeah. right out of the game. You know throw, what I mean? Like, throw to set up the run. He's like, yeah. I'm going to win this game. I don't care what you think we need to do. We're going to win the game. This is what I anticipate they'll do, and this is what I anticipate they'll do later, and it worked. BYU ran Wyoming into the ground later in the game. Sure, yeah, yeah. I'm okay it wasn't with, out I'm of the okay, gates, though. I'm okay with passing to set up the run at BYU. This is BYU. Yeah, absolutely. We're okay with the pass. Okay, so if Jaron is clearly not going to be a primary runner, who is he handing off to as running back one? Getting back to that conversation, yeah. it's like, who – who is RB1? Yeah, I think the RB1, so I think the, the running back conversation is different than the wide receiver in the sense that I think the running back situation is truly a game-by-game -game situation, right? I mean, depending on who you're facing, we knew that, we knew that Wyoming was going to be overly aggressive, right? And they were going to be tracking that backside and, 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 and Lopini and Brooks, the holes are going to be that much tougher because Wyoming is a tough, I mean, they gave up 171 yards to Air Force the week prior, who averages, you know, usually 300 yards a game. So we knew the run game was going to be tough. Uh, but what's nice about the run game right now is you have the speed of Lapini and Brooks, and that speed is, is, a little bit, is, is a little bit slower, right? It's a little bit slower developing. But then you also you hit him with the Miles Davis, which is, which is a much faster speed, and, and you throw the defense off, off guard, right? And that's what happened against BYU with Oregon, the speed. We saw the speed was too much for BYU's defense, frankly. Wrong angles, guys just half a step too slow to their gaps, missing tackles. That's why there are a lot of missed tackles, guys lunging instead of bringing their legs, et cetera. Um, and I think the same thing BYU did now to Wyoming, where you start with Brooks and Lopini, and they're used to a certain pace, right? You're used to tracking that running back and taking your time and going gap by gap, making sure all the holes are filled. And all of a sudden, Miles Davis comes in, and that's happening that much faster. And your, your reaction time is that much shorter, and it takes some time to adjust to that. And I think that's why Miles has so much success. I mean, beyond the fact that he had some great vision, a la Tyler Algier, to cut stuff back on those zone plays, um, but... I was impressed. I was impressed with, with, with his vision, his burst to get through those holes. Um, but I think going forward, I don't think you just go all in on, on him. I mean, it's, it, it's going to be a game-by-game -game situation. I mean, for example, Arkansas, you're going to need some bigger backs to, to, when they make contact to get an extra one or two yards. Um, but then you bring in some speed with Miles Davis in certain situations, and you try gashing that way. And so a change of pace. I don't think you go all in on one of the backs and say, no, you're RB1. I mean, we even saw that in game one with USF. Lopini contributed, right? Um, but I, I do like the fact that you now have this element, the whole thunder and lightning you hear, right? I think Miles brings that, and I, I think that's what's exciting for this offense is it's been missing that, that speed. Uh, and, and now, you know, they were trying to supplement that with Puka on the, on the jet sweeps and fly sweeps, trying to get that yeah. speed on the outside to, to hit the outsides, and now you get that with Miles Davis. So we'll see how that kind of continues to play out. Is it easier as a linebacker to prepare for a running back by committee approach? Like it, or no, harder. No, or it's much it harder. Okay. Much harder, yeah. When you have one back, you, you spend all week watching that film of his tendencies, his footwork, how he hits the holes, his, his pad level, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff you watch. But now you got to watch triple the film when you got Lopini and Miles Davis and, and Brooks. And so it makes it that much tougher. And once again, now you have to adjust the speed of the game because they all play a little different. Uh, and, 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 and the way they attack is a little different. So it makes it that much more difficult. Mm. So. Triple the film on a short week yeah. as well. So yep. that, that's interesting as well. Okay, as we look ahead, because we knew that Wyoming and Utah State, these were, these were games that BYU needs to win at home, obviously, handle them. Heavy favorites, 24 right now with Utah State. Whoa. Uh, Notre Dame and Arkansas sitting there. How are you feeling about BYU's chances in those games, given the injuries, given where BYU's at right now? I, I like BYU's chances. I, I think Jaron Hall is playing elite level quarterback. I mean, Amen. You, you we put can out, use you put, out, you put out the tweet where he's not turning the ball over, knock on wood, right? I mean, it, right, right now the offense is taking care of the ball, which is, you know, the number one uh, goal in the offense is don't turn the ball over. Um, but, I, you know, injury-wise, BYU's basically played without Puka all season. It sounds like Gunnar Romney should be he's right around the corner, according to Kalani, right? Um, and so I think you add that weapon back in. But uh, I'm confident. I, I think – you know, Notre Dame is not really the Notre Dame we maybe thought they were, especially with their injuries they've had. Um, Arkansas against uh, Missouri State look pretty susceptible, right? Uh, How so, good are your a and Aggies? My a Aggies are not that good. Uh, <laughs> so that had a close game. I, I think, honestly, I think BYU has a really good shot at, at um, these, you know, obviously Utah State, but then moving on those two games. And, and once again, it'll be a lot of these injuries. Can guys come back? And can they stay healthy through this stretch? And that's, that's the biggest question mark. And frankly, guys, that's been the storyline for the last three, four, five years, is, is can BYU stay healthy with these, these tough, brutal, independent schedules? And so far, they've somewhat passed and almost failed in certain instances. And, and in order for BYU to get through, they've got to get some of these guys back. 
um, and, and stay healthy. I mean, that's the name of the game. The that's number it. one yeah. guy for that is Jaron Hall. 100%. It, as long as Jaron Hall is, is starting for BYU, you, you got a shot. Well, and, and he's the best QB in every game on the schedule. 100%. And, B, and BYU has shown they can overcome injuries in other positions. Uh, but, you know, we also over showed in the last few years the quarterback position, even though Baylor Romney came in and, and played well, that the quarterback position struggles whenever you bring the back up. And so 100% Jaron's got to yeah. stay healthy. All right, I'm going to make you feel better as you get ready for AFR tonight, okay, with the injury situation. I said this to Jeremy yesterday. Uh, Gunnar Romney, Chase Roberts, Max Tooley, Earl Tuioti Mariner, Caleb Hayes, all expected to be available yeah. for Thursday. Okay, so just let's, that, let's go. take some good some mojo. some welcoming news. Take some yes. good mojo <laughs> yes, we into like AFR that. tonight, man. We love, we love that news. Thanks for hanging out with us, David. Yeah, always fun. Thanks, AFR guys. Tuesday. That means free lunch for us, which is great. <laughs> After further review, it breaks down the X to nose like nobody else from the Wyoming win. Cowboy up! They preview Utah State as well tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. We're going to look deeper into the idea that uh, maybe BYU should be a little bit more concerned about playing Utah State on a Thursday. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From auto accidents to criminal defense and from bankruptcy to family law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. blanket getting cozy with family and friends a gift for everyone minky couture official luxury blanket of byu athletics life is full of competition it helps measure progress pushes us to improve and whoops it can be a whole lot of fun byu tv has its own kind of competition shows where sportsmanship rules teamwork wins, and good character triumphs. I wasn't just gonna leave you there. Whether it's about families competing or life lessons being taught, you'll want your family to see it together. Download the free BYU TV app today. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Make sure you follow the program on social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. He is Jeremiah Spencer. You know what time it is. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Seeing everyone's up in arms about kick times and records, Glenn Stockey, 0-2 on Thursday night games. Are you concerned? Oh, my goodness. And why is the answer absolutely not? Uh, no, I am not concerned in the least about this uh, because I will counter with the stat that uh, BYU is 21, sorry, 22-1 and in games that start 6 p.m. or later uh, in the last three years. Also, Utah State is in college football's bottom top 10. So, <laughs> Utah State doth stinketh to me. Or just the bottom 10. Yeah. 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 No. 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 Not I am not concerned about this at all. Uh, Boise State, another team that's struggling, Jerem. Quarterback Hank Bachmeyer is entering the transfer portal. We've known this for a couple of days. Yeah. Does this essentially guarantee a win for BYU over the Broncos? Because. Bachmeyer is not starting. It doesn't guarantee a win, no. It's hard to win up there. They're certainly going through some challenges. Lost by 17 at UTEP on uh, Friday night. Fired offense coordinator Tim Plough. Brought in Dirk Cutter, who used to be the head coach. Like, there's some real disarray there with Andy Avalos in that program. BYU's got to play Stanford and East Carolina and uh, Liberty. 
this game, based on the idea that Dirk Cutter's coming back, maybe a few weeks to get that offense going, and it's in Boise, BYU hasn't played well up there, it's Super Bowl type game for the Broncos. It has me a little bit nervous. So no, absolutely does not guarantee BYU no. against Boise. No, it's a tough game regardless it of circumstances. It is always tough to like, win up I would there. say if BYU was playing at Utah State this week, yes, BYU should go handle that, but you got to be ready. BYU lost to Boise State last year on their home field. Yeah. Like, this, no, no. You can't turn it over four times yeah. and be like, yeah, we're going to win no matter what. No, yeah, you, nothing you know, turns the ball given. over four times up on the blue, they probably lose by two touchdowns. Yeah, nobody cares. We're Carter. Brett McMurphy projects the Cougars playing Texas Tech in the first responders bowl. Mark Schleybaugh has ESPN, uh, of ESPN has BYU versus App State in the Lending Tree Bowl. Are either of those games or matchups intriguing to you? What's the better location? I am not familiar enough with the Lending Tree Bowl to know a specific location. I don't know where that is either. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it purely from a selfish standpoint here, like where is the Lending Tree? The first responders bowl is in Texas against Texas Tech, so I don't know. Love... Mobile, Alabama. Oh, Mobile. It appears. Mobile yeah. against App State. I don't mind that. I don't mind seeing like Mobile. It'd be warm like, yeah. there in December. Uh, I don't like the idea of playing Texas Tech in Texas in the first responders bowl. That feels like like a pseudo or de facto Big 12 road game. Yeah, that that would not be as ideal uh, for that one. Where's the first responders play? Oh, what the... Where, where is it? At SMU Stadium? Uh, yeah, I believe okay. it's in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. it's in Dallas. Okay. okay, it is expected that the New York Jets will announce today whether or not Zach Wilson will start this week. Okay. We think he's going to. I think he's going to. Jeremy, is Zach's turn more important to the New York Jets or to you and your fantasy football team? Me? I don't care what happens with the Jets. <laughs> I just care about the Jets' offense led by Zach Wilson. I will, Obviously, I want the Jets to win. We all do because that sure. means Zach's sort of security as a quarterback in year two here. Uh, it's both, but hey, frankly, this is about me. I need Zach back You're trying for to fantasy. Pick up a win. You're Come trying on, to get Zach. Out the winless streak. Let's go, Zach. Let's get back, baby. Okay. Join us on Thursday as we get ready for Utah State and BYU with BYU Sports Nation game day as Brian Logan hangs out with the guys. Got him in the photo, baby. He's in, and David Nix is about to throw him a left-handed pass. Six Eastern on BYU TV and the app Thursday. BYU men's basketball opened up practice last night. If you missed it, fear not. We have neatly packaged up some of the best moments from last night's broadcast, and you can watch it next on BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. If you could write a letter to your younger self, what would you say? Ah! Good news. Who are you again? I'm a mental projection from the future that only you can see. I came back to prevent you from becoming a monster. <laughs> Wait, is this a hidden camera thing? This is a story about redemption. Giving someone a second chance to really become their best selves. I guess putting our heads together does make sense. He's not only saving himself, he's actually saving the world.
Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. Yes, basketball season in a way is upon us. Amazing. Eh, give it another month. <laughs> Don't we have the blue and white? Late September, but practices are now going for Mark Pope and yep. company. Last night, we uh, had the privilege of broadcasting that first live practice on BYU TV. Jerem Jordan and Tyler Haas courtside. Now, if you missed it, we showed you just a little bit of it there, but how about some of the best sound? from that first practice that we have neatly packaged up. Listen to this. Let's give it up for Jared McGregor for getting us a point to post to start the practice. Thank you. Good, White. Good. See man the ball. See man the ball. Hey. Hey. Don't look at me. You know your job, right? You know your job. Get him inside that three-point line. Yes. Yes, good job. Love it, Spence. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We have to challenge ourselves as individuals to keep him out of the That has to be just on you. Inside the three, good. Yes. 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 We're here, Trey. Fix it. Get him out of there, Trey. You're, you're playing. You're what? Staying mindful. You're staying mindful. Oh! Yes! Dang it, J-Mac! How much you paying, J-Mac? <laughs> so you guys got it. We got food, we got ice bath, we got cryotherapy, and then get to bed. Okay? All right? I don't need to see anybody out of the club tonight. Just me and Coach Cahill. Okay? All right, rookies, let's go. Rookies, bring it. Uh, I wonder how the club was for Coach Pope and Coach Cahill last club? night. <laughs> a Monday night in Provo. One in Utah County, right? Jeez. Uh, we need to discuss a few things, um, starting with something that was revealed in, in the practice, and we brought it back at the beginning of the show. So, and then we'll get to the good energy stuff. But like, it it hurts to lose Trevin Nell for three to four months. Yes. One of BYU's best shooters, you know, something. In his, own, in his own mind, he's probably the best shooter on the team. So three to four months, that hurts. Yes, he's one of only six returners, Spencer, on this team. There's a lot of new guys. Certainly BYU brings in some talent from the outside in Rudy Williams and Jackson Robinson and Noel Waterman. But Trevin Nell is going to be expected to be in the top seven of the rotation, so that's a bummer. Three to four months. So basically that means he's probably out for the year. Is it worth bringing him back for the final month or so? I don't know. He'd have two more years. He could play two years in the Big 12 if he sits out the entire year. But he is going to be the shot doctor uh, with this team. That's what Mark Pope has challenged him to be. Huh. So he is working with NOAA Analytics, and he broke that down last night. Really interesting stuff. Go check out our uh, social media. We put out the clip. Or go back on the TV and watch the whole thing. But he, ex he explained different things about arc and, and depth as it relates to NBA averages and percentages and where on the rim you miss and how far into the... 19 inches of the cylinder, the ball's got... It's very interesting. So he's looking at his own game, helping others with their shot as well. But yeah, th this means more for the guard line of Spencer Johnson and Jackson Robinson and those guys to really show up in that way. And, and it creates an opportunity for some of those return missionaries like Richie Saunders and Tanner Toulson and even Dallin Hall to perhaps get a few more minutes than they would have. I feel like I know what I'm going to get from certainly the five starters that are coming back. Like, I feel like I know what Foose is. He's just, we think, going to be a better version of what he was last year. Uh, Spencer Johnson uh, will be a very, very hard Does he start? Defender, he hasn't started a game with BYU. Right? Like, yeah. is he now a, a starter? Like, so, but as you said, there are so many new parts. Like, last night when I watched, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm specifically wanting to see Rudy Williams. Like, yeah. he was number one on my, like, top of my list. He's like, going to start at the point. I, I want to see how Rudy plays. Yeah. What his uh, relationship is like with Foose. And, and I want to see how Atiki has developed. You know, Atiki looks bigger. He, oh. He looks way bigger. 40 and a half inch vertical. Okay. Like, jumping, unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, he's jumping out of the gym. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, how, how do they fit these pieces together with the Trevin Nell injury? Like, what does that mean for BYU's rotation now? Like, who is Dallin Hall going to be the guy that gets more minutes? Is Richie Saunders going to be the guy that gets more minutes? Richie, by the, Richie impressed me a lot. Dallin as well. Tanner right there, too. Like, this, this is interesting. Noah Waterman is the most interesting piece on this team, though. Mm. Let me tell you why. Yeah, why is Six it? 6'11". Power forward. He's a, he's a shooter. He's a stretch four. He's a stretch four. He's not a, he's not a power forward. But he can put it on the ground. He can post up a little bit. But he wants to shoot threes. Like Jackson Robinson really wants to shoot threes. 88% of his threes in college or shots have been threes. Ooh. Like 
a stupid number, right? Like way high. Noel Waterman started at the five last year, 49% of the time for Detroit Mercy. Does BYU go small, even though he's 6'11", small in that Foose is your five, Waterman is your four, and then you figure out what combination you want of Rudy Williams. I would anticipate Jackson Robinson is in the starting lineup as well. And then you see where we are with that third piece. Probably was going to be Trevin Nell. Perhaps it's Spencer Johnson. Trey Stewart is going to play more prominently into this team. He has improved a ton. Yoli Childs couldn't stop talking about how impressed he was with Trey Love it. during the summer. And then you have the return missionaries who are in the mix, as mentioned, Richie Saunders. Dallin Hall going to be a star here. And uh, Tanner Toulson. So... It's an interesting group with a lot of new pieces, some real young faces. You don't want to have to rely on return missionaries out of the gate. BYU won't. Those guys are going to come off the bench. But you need the, the three D1 transfers to come in and have an impact right away. Rudy Williams, Noel Waterman, Jackson Robinson. Only one player, Spence, on the team averaged double figures in D1 last year. It was, it was Rudy, Rudy Williams. Williams. 14.7 at Coastal Carolina. So this team certainly got some questions to, uh, to answer. Re regarding Atiki, I think he comes off the bench for Foos or, or Noah at one of those kind okay. of four or five spots. Okay, yeah. That's, so that's I'm, my I'm guess. I'm very interested because BYU is seemingly so light at that number five position because Waterman you have one. is not a guy that wants to play the five. He's, treat him as a three. He wants to shoot from the outside and treat play an outside three. game. Like yeah. he, he is a. He's a, he he's, a perimeter, he's a perimeter. He's a perimeter player. Like yeah. Atiki and Foos are the physicality for BYU. Yes. And then who? Nobody. Then that's uh, it. That that's, it's yeah. a ve it's concerning yeah. for me. But it means more shooting, and it means more uh, quickness. Okay. So BYU has done two things to emphasize the roster. They haven't said you fit the system. No, the system is going to fit the personnel, which is defensively they're going to be more disruptive. They're gonna they're gonna press. They're gonna play a, a certain hybrid zones. Uh, they're going to try and get more deflections. They want okay. more non-shot possessions. Up-tempo and pressure. Turnovers, shot clock violations, that kind of thing, right? Um, and then on offense, they want way more spacing. They did a dribbling drill last night. I haven't seen that in years. They did a dribbling drill. And then they want a space to create more opportunities for uh, open guys to, to get good shots. So it's going to be different. Uh, later we'll get into, do we expect this team to make the tourney? Mm. Certainly they could. But out of the gate, they, they're going to get way better during the season Listen, is what Mark with how told. many new pieces there are, frankly, a top three finish in the West Coast Conference would be really good. Let's do that and then see where It'd we're at. It would be really good. Yeah. Okay, did you miss Coordinator's Corner or last night's men's basketball practice? Hey, we got you covered. It's all on demand on the BYU TV app and specifically on BYUSN.com. Plus the top five plays from Miles Davis and Keanu Hill in their performance against Wyoming. That is highlighting our top five Tuesday. What's number one? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Sleuths may want to pay attention. What just a 
doesn't make sense. If we all do our best. We have to dig deeper. I knew this was too easy. What's our next move? We're supposed to grant this wish. Yeah. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Let's roll out Top 5 Tuesday following BYU's 38-24 win against Wyoming Saturday night. Top five plays to, uh, between wide receiver Keanu Hill and running back Miles Davis. Number five, a nine-yard throw to Keanu Hill from Jaron Hall. His first touchdown of the game. Notice Wyoming defenders tripping over each other. Hill did the gritty, got a 15-yard Hit that penalty. gritty! Told me yesterday that wasn't planned. It just happened. <laughs> that TD made it 28-10 BYU. At number four, Miles Davis, part of the hot hand. 25-yard run right here. Dodging and weaving. BYU's first drive of the second half. Hall to Davis. We expect a lot more of that against Utah State. Number three, after two stall drive, the Cougars got a spark from Hill. They got a pass from Jaron Hall and afforded four would-be tacklers for 47 yards that really woke up the offense and uh, was one of his best plays of the game, but it wasn't the best. No, it was That's that, why it's number no, three. That was the spark play at number two. Miles Davis, 70-yard run. Three minutes left in the game. Massive hole created by the offensive line. Davis is running like people are chasing him, and they are. And they just got him at the five-yard line. Oh, almost had the touchdown. And the top play between Keanu Hill and Miles Davis is Keanu Hill, the Hall to Hill Hall. Hall to Hill Hall. Third and six, 11 point game, 65 yards tw in the air, 22 yard line. He grabs this, and then this defender has no chance at stripping the ball or tackling Keanu. 6'4 and cannot be brought down all the way into the end zone. That made it 35-17 and essentially sealed the win. The most memorable piggyback in Keanu Hill's life. He <laughs> called it a piggyback that was the, the real, post game. That was the real random cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Indeed it was. Uh, didn't go well. No eight seconds right there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You don't win the championship. Our question of the day. Who is BYU's RB1 right now? The elite voice of the day presented by PAX. Healthcare elevated from at Chaplin Schumann says football is a rough and situational sport. So truthfully, over the season, BYU needs all of them. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Need them. RB1 is three players right now. It is the hot RB1 is the hot hand. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Gideon George for his George's Helping Hands Foundation shoe drive uh, against Utah December 17th. And then Foos and Richie Saunders started the Foos Foundation. They are building a facility in Mali for youth for basketball. Incredible. Amazing story. They went to Mali and talked to the Ministry of Sport and Land and got all this land donated. Amazing. Can we do a deep blow on that? Sheesh. Well, thanks to today's guest, David Nixon. All right, Dennis. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Royce Bybee. See you tonight for After Further Review and BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Go Cougs.